Hi, Matt Byer of Matt Byer Organizing with Organizing Paper Archives Made Easy. Do you worry that you have too much paper? Maybe you're wondering how long to keep files, or maybe you're overwhelmed with where to begin. Well, if so, stay tuned. In my last video, we looked at the four essential stages of paper. Understanding these four stages is the key to understanding how paper must circulate. As I feature in my book, Circulation Prevents Accumulation. How you circulate your sleeping files is directly related to how you keep your daily paperwork organized. It starts with the running files that you want to make a point of acting on, which become sitting files that you need to be able to find reliably. Sleeping files are what we are talking about today. They are what you keep just in case, and they are on their way to becoming dead files. You don't have to wait for them to pass through sleeping files. Files can be dead on arrival in the form of junk mail. Recognizing sleeping files relieves you of having to make the perfect keep or toss decisions. The big reason to separate sleeping files from current files is that you're less likely to need them, and therefore they can be stored more remotely. That can free up a ton of space in your home office to effectively process the paperwork that you do need handy. The rule is, remote need merits remote location. They can be woken up if necessary. Sleeping files especially make sense if you run a business and are holding on to a lot of tax supporting material. It seems that everybody's got different comfort levels, but I keep mine for seven years. It's best to check with your accountant to be sure. You may also want to make an allowance for sleeping files if there's a lot of medical and financial files that you'd like to keep just in case. In my last video, I talked about the importance of not worrying about touching a piece of paper more than once and sorting really fast. We do this by starting with the easiest decisions and keeping a singular focus. That singular focus continues once you have quickly separated the sleeping files from the other stages. If old files have gotten out of order, it's not worth fussing over categories at this point. Just sort by year. In the unlikely event you need to find an old file, at least you will have limited the search by year. By the way, I consider owner's manuals and most keepsakes to be sleeping files, because we tend to keep those just in case. So store those more remotely, too. Note, you may have some sleeping files, perhaps some legal ones, that you want to hang on to indefinitely. For all property files, a simple rule to follow is hold until sold. However, the vast majority of sleeping files are on their way to becoming dead files. The best time to circulate sleeping files to dead files is the first Saturday after April 15th, when taxes have been settled. And it's the same time to circulate sitting files to sleeping files. Think it will take all day? It takes less than half an hour. The secret is in the user-friendly filing system I use in my sitting files. I'll be discussing that in my next video. The circulation of files after your taxes are settled is your number one annual organizing habit. Now, if you've had it with paper and you want to go paperless, I would start by separating out the sleeping files. And I would devote your scanning time to running and sitting files first. Once everything is digital, your need for physical file space is over. Just don't underestimate the amount of work it takes to get you there. But if you're keeping your paper, keep it easy. For sleeping files, remember, just sort by a year, separate to relocate, and circulate files just once a year. Next week, we'll look at sitting files, the files you need to be able to find reliably. So please tune in and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.